Inside Intervals, episode 16. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. I know I've been away for a minute from the podcast, just needed a little break to focus on other things. Um, I will be back with the podcast. I will be dropping um, two episodes, hopefully a month, uh, for the podcast. So, yeah, I will be back to um, I will be back to uh, frequent uploading again with the podcast because I do want to keep you guys up to date and everything and stuff like that. And also, um, yeah, so... January, expect two podcasts a month, and then for the re- from February onwards for the rest of the year, it will be two podcasts a month. I was gonna try and do it weekly, but again, I want I do want to focus on other videos and other areas of the channel as well. So, with that being said, let's get into today's topic. James Harden has officially been traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Now, of course, you know James Harden. We heard rumours. We heard rumours that he was going to go to this. He wanted to go to this place or that place, uh, to the Sixers, to the Nets. And, of course, they were just rumours. And when the season started, it didn't look like he was going to go anywhere. It looks like that, well, you know, the team didn't listen to him and he just basically he was just going to basically stay on the team. Now, with that being said, he has been traded to the Nets. And I think... Um, uh, it was, a, I think, it was like a three-way trade, and Victor Oladipo has replaced James Harden on the Nets. Uh, Jared Allen and a few, and I think it was, I think it was Jared Allen and one other person went to the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. In regardless of that three-way trade, in regards to that three-way trade, and um, yeah, it it does look interesting, and um, you know, of course, on paper, this probably looks like a, a very good super team. And um, does this put the Nets in there for contention or to contend against any sort of team in the playoffs? Um, yeah, it does. It does. Will they win? Who knows? That's the that's the that's the thing that we are waiting for, obviously, until the playoffs happen. So yeah, as for right now, I'm just going to talk about it and tell you my thoughts on this trade. And I personally think that this trade it is it's not a bad trade at all. I don't think, I don't think it is a bad trade for either team. But what I do think is that, you know, James Harden, you know, this whole process of what he was going through, he, you know, he basically gave up on that, on the Rockets team. Um, You know, he said he tried everything. He said he tried everything and it just didn't work out. So he wanted to trade. As you know, last season, Russell Westbrook and James Harden were paired together and we thought, oh, you know, they were paired before on on that OKC team back in 2010, 2011 times. And... They, we thought, oh, yeah, them two could have a strong connection if it could work out. But no, they're both ball dominant players, and I think it is safe to say that Russell Westbrook was never the problem. It was James Harden, and I'm gonna say this like, like hand on my heart, <laughs> you know, hand on my chest, everything that James Harden was the issue. The reason why he was the issue is this, and I think Shaq put it best when he said this on ESPN the other day. You are the problem. When are you going to start taking ownership and accountability for yourself? You know, you talk about the team, this, the team, that. No, but this person didn't do this, this person didn't do that. But what about yourself? What did you, what did you do? You know? And Shaq pulled up the stats. Uh, he was shooting 41% from the field and 21% from the three-point line in, um, in, in playoff games. In playoff games. So in playoff games, he went cold. He legit went cold. And um, he said that, you know, Shaq also mentioned that he tried everything, but at the same time, you asked for a different set of players. He, at one point, James Harden played with Dwight Howard, who at the time was a dominant big man. Yeah, they got to the conference finals. They got beaten by the by the Golden State Warriors. That team, of course, you know, it was a four on victory. But yes, it was. They were still a strong. The Houston Rockets was still a strong team. Definitely a strong team. Yeah. They get CP3, who I think was a good fit and shouldn't have been traded in the first place. What happens? They get to the they get to the conference finals. Harden was a no show. Not just the team. The team obviously didn't do their part, but he was a no show as the big as the main guy on that team as the as the somewhat of the leader. He was a no show, you know. Then he gets Russell Westbrook, and I'm going to talk about Russell Westbrook a little bit later on, but. Um, he said, but no, not he said, sorry, but the media said that Russell Westbrook is a bad teammate. I think it's clear to see that who was the bad teammate, who who it was. 
And it clearly wasn't Russell Westbrook. Now, to get into Russell Westbrook a little bit, because I don't want to go off topic of James Harden and what the rest have to say. Uh, Russell Westbrook, of course, he's on the Washington Wizards right now. Yes, they are not winning games like that. But again, you have to give it time. And of course, Russell Westbrook is still in, well, just coming out of his prime, but also he's still putting up numbers. He's still putting up numbers. He's still trying, and he gives you effortless energy on the court. So my thing is this. Russell will find his place and he'll find his time. If another trade has to happen for him, then it has to happen for him. But he will find his place and time to make Washington better. I think he can do it. Not even just him. I think him and Bradley Bro are a good backcourt. I don't think, you know, it's better than John Wall being there. I don't think he's better than John Wall because John Wall's not there. But I do think that they can still pull it together. They can still pull it together. And that team is still pretty young. They have some good prospect picks. So hopefully we can see what happens in the future for them, for them over the next year or two. I don't think this year, they could make the playoffs, maybe an eighth seed, but again, it's gonna, they're going to have to be very, very uh, consistent in winning games. But as of right now, it's still early in the season. They've still got some time to change things. So, um, you know, that's I think the slander for Washington, the Washington Wizards is just, you know, it's going to be there, but I do want it to change at some point because, again, I don't think that the team got better for trading for trading John Wall to the Rockets for Russell Westbrook. So, yeah. But anyway, back to um, James Harden. Now, here's the thing. You have John Wall, who had just been traded for, and I personally think John Wall is a slightly, slightly better point guard than Russell Westbrook. I do think that um, John Wall can slow down the game, play his own pace, and he can be a consistent scorer. Again, he's just come back from injury, but he's trying to get himself, his legs under him. Same with Demarcus Cousins. I think he was he was a he was my he's still one of my favorite, favorite big men. Very dominant, but the only thing was foul trouble, uh, you know, getting thrown out of games, all that type of stuff. But regardless, he was a dominant big man at, before his injury. So with back with that being said, I do like to see him on the court, and I hope he can get back to how he was doing before, because he's still a versatile big. He and people need to you know understand that he is a versatile big. Now, put this in perspective. James Harden said that, you know, he still wasn't happy with the whole John Wall and Demarcus Cousins coming there. And I'm thinking, you have two solid guys who have come back from injury who are trying to prove a point this season. So my best bet is for you to play. I, I would play with them. I would play with them, see how this season turns out. If it doesn't turn out the way you wanted to, then you could you could have moved on next season. And I think James Harden, James Harden's contract was coming up anyway. It might be this year or next year, but anyway, you should. I think he should have just waited till this season ended. If they make the playoffs, see what they can do, then decide from there on if you want to move on or just give it another go. That's that's what somebody does. That's what a, that's what somebody a player that who takes accountability for himself and says, you know what, let's give it another go. And it's still early in the season. And I, and I hope, um, and I know watching John Wall's press conference and even DeMarcus Cousins' press conference, it just seemed like, yeah, they wanted him gone, honestly. Because even John Wall said, you know, you know, it's only nine games in and you're affecting the chemistry already. We should be trying to build this chemistry now so we can make it better later on. But that wasn't happening. DeMarcus Cousins said that he didn't like the disrespect that when he was coming up to training and... You know, he was coming, what well, stuff was happening off the court when he was coming in training, wherever he just didn't have a care, basically, apparently. And what even smacks it as well, what I found it so funny is, that I know people have seen the viral video of James Harden having a belly. And I'm thinking to myself, you're really letting yourself go because they won't trade you. You're out here going to strip clubs, doing whatever. And I'm just thinking, James Harden, what are you doing for yourself? And he's always had a little bit of a stomach, but now it's is really visible and I think it's gotten bigger and I'm thinking you're letting yourself go to try and prove a point that you want to be traded. What is that? Are you not supposed to be an athlete? Do you not do you not have personal trainers? Do you not have the coaching staff? Do you not have them on you? Like to me that is that is just blatantly giving up. I'm sorry. That is blatantly giving up. And to be honest with you, he's not. Tr he can say what he wants, but I don't think he has tried hard enough, in my personal opinion. Because the one season, I think the one season, I think I can't remember exactly what season it was, but 
But I know James Harden was playing point guard. As he was playing point guard, he was playing defense. That's the first season I have suddenly seen him play a solid amount of defense. And I thought, wow, him playing point guard isn't such a bad option. And he's playing defense and he's running the offense. He knows how to do these things. He's got a good offensive game. But if you're really going to be lazy and you're really going to, you know, you're really going to, like, just do all these things, to me personally, it seems like, well, these people are not lying. You you have given up, in a way. You have. You have given up. And also, as well, I think he even got into altercation with someone on the team. I can't remember. I think it was... I don't think it was Christian Wood. It might have been Christian Wood. But somebody on the team, he had an altercation. And that just causes, like, well, that's a bit of a... A dis- that's a stressing that's a stressful situation so yeah my I'm just like with the whole trade I'm like okay the Nets are a super team but also here's the thing about the Nets that I will that I can touch on a little bit with Kyrie hasn't turned up for a game he's missing games for personal reasons and he's not saying why and obviously Kaylee's just pretty much out there by himself and I understand you know he's out there by himself but he's, you know, still putting up numbers. The team's, the team's still winning. You know what I'm saying? And and I hope that KD pushes James Harden to get back into shape because he can't be playing with, like, a stomach like that. Nearly as, not even nearly as big as mine, but, hey, like, it is what it is. <laughs> it's, that's the funniest thing about it. I'm, just, I'm looking at this guy like, wow. Is he really trying to put on weight just so he can prove a point? And I'm thinking, you know what? That is sad. That's sad. This is a star athlete doing this. In all my life, I've probably not seen... I mean, I've seen big players in the league, but they were naturally big. That's how their body size were, like um, Glenn Davis, big baby. Naturally, he was naturally big. He had a stomach, but I think... in it, Well, he, he had a stomach, but it wasn't so much a big stomach. It was just how his build was. You know what I'm saying? And he was quite broad and very strong, but... If you was to see, but James Harden, it's just like you're six five, the height you are, and I'm thinking, how much, why, how, how did you, how did you put on this much weight? I'm just so confused. I really am confused. You know. So yeah, I mean, all I can say that is to the Houston Rockets, I think that um, they're not in rebuild mode just yet. I don't think they are. They still have uh, four. Well, they've still got four good guys who can start. And of course, actually, no, sorry, five, sorry. Let me not forget for the fifth person. They've got a PJ Tucker, the Marcus Cousins, Christian Wood, Victor Oladipo now. But again, apparently he might be traded again. So I don't know if he's going to be staying there. But yeah. And of course, John Wall. I think it's, I think it's a solid team. And we just have to see how it plays out. We just have to see how it plays out. You know? And I know for a fact that um, a lot of people can... A lot of people can say... A lot of people are trying to defend James Harden, I think. Some people are trying to defend him. I don't think a lot of people are, but some people are trying to defend him by saying that, oh, he did try everything with that team. But I can't lie. Every year that he's been to the playoffs, something's happened. Something's gone wrong. It's the same thing how, like, Paul George, when he goes to the playoffs, do we get onto Paul George? Yes, of course we get onto Paul George. We go onto Paul George when he misses the playoff. He's been, he's been, calling him, he's been called Playoff P for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And he disappears. That's what happens. James Harden, it's the same thing. And now, because it's the start of the season, it's like whatever. And I'm thinking, you've given up with this team. You don't want to listen to nobody on this team. Like, you know, like, you know, you get Russell Westbrook, doesn't work out. You're both bull dominant players. Understandable, but it, it was made out to it was made out that he was the he was the person that was a bad teammate. I think it was. I think it was honestly him. You know what I'm saying? You talk about leadership and all this and that. You can't do anything. I hope when James Harden gets to the Nets that Kyrie and KD understand that, look, listen, like, it's not about you being the leader no more. It's about us, like, being as a unit. Yes, we might be the three best players on this team, but we also have to work with the rest of the unit. And that's something he needs to learn. It's ridiculous. I want to see what he does now in terms of everything else. Like his over his offensive game, yeah, that's fine. It's fine, but defense, there's issues, and I think we've known this for years. There's been issues. 
You know, um, God rest his soul, Kobe Bryant. Even he said this a few years back that you can't win a championship with the way James Harden's playing. So that needs to be taken into account. And, it's, and, it, and Kobe wasn't lying. He was not lying. He really is. He's saying it's the way he has to do it now. And I'm thinking, fair enough. It's the way he has to do it for now. But when you get two playmakers, and this, let me touch on this, yeah. CP3, a good playmaker. Russell Westbrook, yes, he's not a playmaker like CP3, but he still can get you the ball. He can still pass you the ball, get you an open assist, get you a shot up. Can he not create plays? It's you. Why do you want to ball up and do these ISO moves and then take a three and then fall down and, and then beep, it's a foul every single time. That can't work every single game. Work within the system. I think I'm getting sick and tired of these star players just like not working within the system. If the system's not for you, leave at the end of the season. Don't be coming up starting drama right in the midst of everything when people are trying to play and actually trying to build chemistry. It seems like to me that you never wanted to, he never wanted to build chemistry with John Wall or DeMarcus Cousins, at least. Yeah? And yes, they've just come back from injury, but these guys have actually been doing their thing. And I saw a comment on Instagram, someone saying like, oh, but John Wall was held to 10 points the other night and... You know, he didn't really come to show and play. Of course, they're playing against the Lakers. They're playing against a strong team. But isn't he a, a leader? Isn't he the leader of that team, James Harden? Is he not the leader? Is he not supposed to, like, at least ca carry most of the scoring like, as a shooting guard? You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to, is he not supposed to carry the scoring? Remember, John Wall is a person who is a playmaker as well. He doesn't have to always score. So, you know... Well, it's interesting. He's made this season interesting. I'm going to see if he actually loses weight. And sees, 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 and we're going to see a difference. I'm going to see, I'm going to, I think we're going to see a difference of James Harden on the Houston Rockets and James Harden on the Brooklyn Nets. I think it's safe to say where some people's mindsets are in this game. And... Like Shaq said again, accountability. Accountability. Own up to your mistakes. Then work on them. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the podcast. Um, if you if you did like uh, the podcast today, just don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, share, comment, and also subscribe, which is the main thing. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.